Hi class, we are going to study today 3.8 hyperbolic functions. And actually hyperbolic function, hyperbolic function is very important in engineering, also mathematics too, and in science as well. Also, you are living in San Francisco, which has the most famous hyperbolic function, which is Golden Gate Bridge. Do you see that Golden Gate Bridge has like a perfect, really nice arch? And that is actually hyperbolic function, which I will show you here. And then there will be a short video that I want everybody to watch it as everybody's going to study in STEM. So let's study about what hyperbolic function is. First, we are going to study about e to the x. Do you guys remember e to the x graph? So I'm going to plot those points that we studied very beginning of the semester. So if I plug in 0, 1, and 1, e, and negative 1, 1 over e e to the negative 1, right? So e is about 2.7 and then 1 over e, I like to use a 0.4 although it's close to 0.5 because I don't want to feel like it's a 0.5 so 1 over e, I will show you exactly what it is that is, oh actually I will use, oh that's about 0.3678 so we call it about 0.4 then then so let's graph e to the x is this graph now we are going to graph e to the negative x which is going to be same graph but it's going to be transformation by along the y axis so my graph is going to be identical but it's going to be flipped over y axis so this coordinate will be one comma i will use it about 0.4 this one is 0, 1, and then that will be negative 1, 2.7. Okay, so I got these two numbers, and what they are saying is add these two numbers and divide by 2. So I will explain to you two different ways. I like to do graph way, also you can do with calculator and using number with numerical way. So I like to find what will be the value at here. So that means we are going to now compute, we know this function and we know this function. So if I plug in 0, e to the 0 is, let's just write it out so that you don't get confused. That will be 1 plus e to the, have a negative 0. That's also 1 over 2, which is 1. So when I plug in 0, I got 1. So I got 0, 1. Okay, we're going to do now next number, e to the 1 plus e to the negative 1 over 2. So you can use that number, 2.7 plus 0.4, about 0.4, divided by 2 gives me about 3.1 divided by 2. So that will be about 1.55. So when I plug in 1, I got 1.55. Okay, you can use calculator and it will be better. Then, if you look at other side, now I'm going to plug in negative 1, so e to the negative 1 plus e to the 1 over 2, which is the same as this one. So I get that as a 1.55 about, so I get to graph this side, negative 1, 1.55. You can definitely plug in more, but I kind of see the shape here. This side is going to be the same as the other side, and then it's going to be increasing. So I'm going to graph this, and this function is e to the x plus e to the negative x over 2 and later on we call this function as cosh x and i'm gonna tell you on the main dish why okay so now i want you to pause the video and then try to now draw exactly same value but this time you are going to subtract you can draw a graph and then you can figure it out or you can also just plug in points like I did just a 1, 0, negative 1 and find some pattern there so pause it and then try your graph here and compare with me so let's look at my graph now if you look at mine this I actually um, evaluate each value by plugging 0, 1 and negative 1 so I got 0, 1.15, negative 1.15 so I plot those coordinates so this is the graph I got. So now, let's talk about the graph a little bit. It, this kind of looks like a quadratic, right? But it's not. If it's a quadratic, it has to start from 0, 0. But it starts from 0, 1. Remember that it starts from 0, 1. Also, it's nice if you remember this one. And then that is recalled as cosh x. 
So it's a definition. You just uh, adding e to the x and e to the negative x and then divide by 2. Basically, you can think of it as average and then the other one is a subtract. Then when you look at this one, it kind of looks like x to the cube, right? Looks like x to the cube function, but carefully, it doesn't pass through 1, 1. It passes through 1, 1.15. 1. And also, this one has a name, which is singe x. Why? It's just like a pi. It's just a name so long that it's just so hard to mention it every time. So they just decide to give the name. And as I mentioned, why? I will tell you. And then doesn't this look like an arch shape of the Golden Gate Bridge? Yes, actually, there's a very powerful function. Have you heard about arch, which is a lot of um, church, they have an arch shape of their ceilings and then bridge. A lot of them you also have a more than um, our Golden Gate Bridge shape of the bridge, actually all of the, a lot of the different countries as well. So this is actually part of the function that they use in order to build the uh, Golden Gate Bridge and which, uh, which we actually call as a catenary. It's a catenary, catenary, catenary. So I'm gonna actually put a short video about it, and I want you to watch. Also, you can actually draw the your function inside here, and then just look at how they are gonna look the shape. If you look at the next page, also I kind of describe. And then this one, if you flip it, this is basically negative e to the negative x and then look at the how the shape works right kind of beautiful how it fits there so this is a cosh this is a cinch and then cosh starts from 0 comma 1 and cinch starts from 0 comma 0 remember this is the definition and then definition of a cosh and cinch is same thing as a subtraction here so if you look at the box i'm not gonna actually go over because i already mentioned that is a cinch this is a cosh and then there's a little box about the definition so try to remember that okay i'm gonna jump to um main dish so let's talk about our main dish our main dish is just uh, going over and then check some of the properties and then now i'm gonna tell you why it's gonna look like a cinch and cosh as a name so before you do can you guys recall our trick we do here? So I want you to go over some of the definitions and can you answer quickly? Okay, so okay, so let's do it. You can pause it and do it. So do you get to remember some of the properties? Okay, so sign definition is if you have a triangle with angle T, here's the X, Y, and R. So it's going to be height over radius is a sign, cosine is a base over radius, and then sign zero is a zero at the sign function and cosine one uh, cosine zero is one as a cosine function just remember tangent is a sine of a cosine and then sine is going to be actually um as you see it's the art function that negative sine x is going to be the same value and cosine is an even function so if you plug in negative x or x will give me same y values and then i want you to remember trig identity this is a very important I, I always tell my student although you forget everything i want you to remember trig identity and you will see the cal 2 so sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta is equal to one that came from x squared plus y squared is equal to one as a circle and then today we are going to learn about three derivatives so we're gonna see what uh, no, we actually know three derivative, right? Why is the sine derivative class that was cosine x, and then what was the cosine derivative that was negative sine x, and then I wish that I had a room. The tangent derivative is cosecant, I don't know, secant square x, right? So that was the tangent derivative. So remember, one, two, three, and then let's compare with now hyperbolic function. So what was hyperbolic function? Do you remember the definition? Since x means I want you to remember e to the x minus e to the negative x over two. Okay, cosh x means e to the x plus e to the minus x over two. As I said, just so the name is so long that they gave the name. Now, do you remember the graph of this one? Looks like graph looks like this way x cube, and then next one looks like quadratic, but it starts from zero comma one. So what was a cinch zero, which is zero? What's a cosh zero, which is one? How do I know? Plug in, right? You can also plug in and then compute that, which I show you previous page. Oh, by the way, did you see there's a graph nicely of a cinch and cosh graph? And then there's a definition also written right above this page. So what would be 
punch x. Funny name, right? That's going to be just as, as you guess. Cinch x over cosh x, which is cinch is e to the x minus e to the negative x over two divide by e to the x plus e to the negative x over two. So we can divide by these two numbers, right? So cosh looks like actually very similar to that. So so far, why they are saying that this is cinch and cosh? Because just the, the behavior of this hyperbolic function just look like sine or cosine. As you saw, do you see the sine zero zero, cinch zero zero, cosh zero is one, cosine zero is one. Also, punch is cinch over cosine, which the tangent is a sine over cosine. Then also, if you look at this one, this we saw that this is going to be odd function, so same as negative sine cinch x, which is going to be same as a sine function behavior and cosh negative x is also even function which behaves like cosine function. So they just named it this way so they remember easy. Even another amazing thing is, do you remember we have a trig identity that actually works exactly similar, not the same, but it starts from cosh square x minus sin square x is equal to 1. And how you prove? What do you need to do is basically same thing you just plug in this one square minus this one square everything cancel out and it's gonna leave as one do you want me to do it <laughs> i will just write it down for you and then i want you to just trust me so this one if you plug in this formula e to the x i may do it for you if you really want me to do it square minus and then if i plug e to the x minus e to the negative x over two this is actually not too bad if you do it then that's going to you just foil it out very carefully and then all those long work is going to turn out to be one this is for timing reason i will just leave it as one but if you want you can totally do it so today's goal i want to find the derivative of a hyperbolic function so what will be derivative of a cinch x what will be derivative of a cinch x so when you look at this one it's going to be very also similar to our sine function so let's take a derivative so let's take a derivative how do we take a derivative definitely we're not going to use the long definition but since x we know that that is e to the x minus e to the negative x over 2 so i will just take a derivative of this one that means i can pull out 1 over 2 first right as a factor then take a derivative that will be e to the x minus take a derivative of this one careful e to the negative x but i'm going to have chain rule here so which is a negative x take a derivative becomes a negative one so look this carefully two as a denominator e to the x plus e to the negative x wow that look familiar what is it that is cosh x is it so cool yeah math is so amazing sometimes to me and they never lie either so now i found the derivative of a sine a cinch which is actually becoming cosh which actually behaves like a sine taking derivative becomes a cosine now do you see that why the name is cinch and cosh with h means hyperbolic function right so there is actually cosine and then a cosh and then punch i wanted to try same way plug in that definition take a derivative and then punch may be a little hard so i will help you but if you want to challenge it do so and then meet with me so class let's look at my work so let's compare one more time all the trick side so that you don't forget sine square plus cosine square is equal to one which we call the trig identity and then we have actually identity for hyperbolic function cosh square x minus cinch square x is equal to one it's easy to forget so remember this one so we just saw that cinch x is a cosh x and now if you look at my work cosh x is a cinch x then let's compare with actually trig function sine x derivative was cosine x cosine derivative is actually negative sine x so there's a little differences so don't forget the cosh derivative is just positive cinch x and then tangent derivative is secant square x which is 1 over cosine square x now i want you to look at how i approach to find the derivative i use a definition of the tan tanchi is cinch over cosh and then as you see if i want to take a derivative i need to use the um, 
quotient rule. So denominator square and then look, take a derivative which is cosh and then leave it minus, leave it and then take a derivative. But anybody remember what is this? As I just mentioned, cosh square minus sinh squared is equal to 1. So I rewrote it 1 over cosh square x. Do you think they're going to call it a set x? I think so, yeah. Okay, so now main dish, we have to prove it. Let's prove this one. So I will do it and then you can actually compare with me. So just recall, what was the cosh definition? e to the x plus e to the negative x over 2 square minus sinh is e to the x minus e to the negative x over 2. So we just need to do algebra, so I don't worry about it. Since I don't want to deal with over 2, can I pull out? When you square it, it will come out as 1 over 4, right? So inside, all I need to do is e to the x plus e to the negative x square minus e to the x minus e to the negative x square. Okay, everybody following me? Okay, I just pull out the denominator out and I'm going to do foiling. So 1 over 4 and a lot of only symbol cancel out. I will actually use this side so that you guys can see 1 over 4 and foil e to the 2x plus 2 times e to the x e to the negative x. If you actually notice, that becomes a 1. e to the x away to the x, right? So, but it doesn't matter now. Just a plus e to the negative 2x and then careful, minus, now I'm going to square e to the 2x minus 2 e to the x e to the negative x plus e to the negative 2x. Okay, so if I distribute this one, just so remember, since I don't have a room, I will just write it out. So this, this cancel out, negative e to the 2x. And then next one will cancel out, this one, this one, plus and negative e to the negative 2x. And then as I mentioned, what is this one? e to the x over e to the x is 1. So this is just a 2. And then what is this one? This is also 2. So if all I have left is 1 over 4 and 2 minus minus 2, which is going to be 4. So I get 1. And now I get to prove the those hyperbolic identity as start with cosh, cosh square x minus sinh square x is equal to 1. Okay. So now leave me at the dessert. So class, we are on dessert part and I want to actually go with dessert together with you. So if you want to do it first, I want to pause it and then try one, two, three, four. And these are from the previous one, but I want to go over again because as you see, it will come back 3.9. So I want to do together with in class activity four and five. So let's take a derivative. Let's try to see if you can make all these circles of uh, composite functions. If anybody see composite function, also if you want to do this one, try because sometimes it's not easy to do it by yourself. So I see those are format. So now when I look at this, there is going to be chain rule. So let's take a derivative of the outside function. I don't know if you figure how I do um, mentally a little bit fast. So take a derivative of a sinh, which was a cosh. So I'm going to write down cosh and then copy down inside function, don't touch. So I'm done with outside function, derivative, and then times, now I'm going to take a derivative of inside, cosh derivative was cinch again, so cinch t. So that's it, answer. If you wanna write it again nicely, careful, this one is not multiplication, this is a composite function. So you can pull out cinch t times cosh and cosh t. There's no way we can simplify this one. I think we have to write it this way. Okay, now tan chain next one is going to be the same idea as what we have. Do you remember what was the derivative of tan? Remember that tangent derivative was 1 over cosine square or secant square. So I can use that and it's going to be taking derivative outside. So, so don't be afraid. Take a derivative that will be 1 over cosh square whatever inside. So 1 over cosh square, just a copy, whatever inside, just ignore it, okay? I just copy it, times, now derivative of inside, do you see it's going to be 8? So I will just write it here, 8, then that will be the answer. Good job if you got it, same. 
So now, incline sensitivity, same thing. If you want to pause it, go ahead. Or now, do it together with me. So when I look at this one, 3y, let me double check. Square. So 3y square, that is going to be 3y, oh. That's going to be. Okay, so in class activities, let's do in class activities. So if you want to look at this one, it's going to be 3 and then inside 2y. But don't forget, I took the derivative respect to y that I have to write it this part. So which cancel out and then that's going to be later on the derivative with respect to x. Minus now, this will be careful, you have to take a product rule. So take a derivative of x, there will be 1 times leave it plus leave it and take a derivative of y is 1. Since I took a derivative of 1, I have to write it dy dx equals derivative of negative 9 is 0. Okay, lots of one to organize it. 6y dy dx minus y minus x dy dx equal to zero. So combine these two as a like terms. So I can factor this one out from dy dx, you see, and then I'm going to put 6y minus x is equal to y goes to other side. So I see that the derivative of this implicit function is dy dx, y over 6y minus x. That's the answer. Okay. Sometimes if you do twice, it gets better, right? So now let's look at b here. Let's look at b here. I will try to squeeze in here. I made a, uh, I didn't make a mistake, but I could go actually further. That's why I want to explain this one one more time. So let's take a derivative respect to dx. So left one is going to be 5 over 2 square root of x. I hope that now everybody got familiar with square root of x because of 1 over 2 square root of x equals next one. Take a derivative 1 over 2 square root of y, but dy dx, I forced to take a derivative of respect to y. So I'm almost there. Need to solve for this one. So multiply top by 2 square root of y. So I'm multiplying top by 2 square root of y. So dy dx, top is going to be multiplied by 2 square root of y. Last time I stopped here. But actually, we could go further. Look at it. I have a 5 root y and square root of x. If you already noticed, that's excellent. I noticed it while I was doing homework. And now, did you notice that the question says, what is square root of y? Square root of y is a 5 root of x. So I'm going to replace 5 root y is, I can go one more step, 5 root x. That even makes it better dy dx, do you see that? I get answer just 25. And I didn't notice last time, and I saw that while doing homework. So that was it for today, and I hope that you learned something from the dessert, and keep doing it, and I will see you next section. Good job, everybody, and see me on the office hours. Bye.